This episode from 1974 features ultra cool DJ Mel Mounds, the short circus, doing the stop song and the adventures of Letterman and lots of easy reader. Today on The Electric Company, you'll see Sally read this simple word. Now you sing along with us. You know what I mean?
got to read that message. It's very important. Hmm. Do not bother this giant person. Do not bother this giant person. Oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, I seem to be having trouble reading the... What? Oh, what? <laughs> Do not bother this giant person. That's me. Do not bother this giant person. Once there was a lady who lived in a very simple house. She wore very simple clothes. She ate very simple things. Drank very simple things. She even read very simple things. See Dick. See Jane. Now that's what I like. A nice, simple book with nice, simple words. Nothing fancy. Then came a knock at her simple door. The lady got up from her simple chair to see who it was. You are, you are Sally Simple? Yes, I am. Sally Simple. Yes. I got a message for you. Thank you. Yeah. Dear, I am exhausted from reading that book, and now I have to read this message. Oh, well. Sally Simple took one look at the message and said, Are you kidding? I'm supposed to read this? Look at the size of this word. And this word. And this word. And so Sally Simple read only the simple words of the message. You will meet. Forget the rest. Then Sally Simple took down the message, tore it up, and threw it away. But suddenly, a piece of note she had thrown in the basket caught her eye. Wait a minute. I know this word. This word is some. <gasps> Oh, my. And I know this word. This word is day. Hmm. Someday. Someday. 
you will. Someday you will meet. Someday you will meet one. Let's see. Oh. Someday you will meet one. <gasps> Here's the word some again. Let's see. <gasps> oh. Someone. Someday you will meet someone. I know this word, hand. Someday you will meet someone, hand. I bet I know what this word is. Some. And so, Sally Semple learned that sometimes long, fancy-looking words can be two simple words just stuck together. Imagine, sometimes long, fancy-looking words can just be two simple words stuck together. Someday, someone handsome. Suddenly, there was another knock at Sally Semple's door. A simple. I forgot to have you uh, sign for the message. Would you take off your glasses? Mm. And would you please take off your hair? Oh, you are handsome in a simple sort of way. Thank you. Um. Listen, would you like to go for a ride on my motorbike? It's right up there. I'd love to. I'll be with you in a jiffy. OK. And so Sally Simple and her handsome someone lived happily ever after. First, I'd like to go have a steak. And then for dessert, we could have a banana split, you know, the kind with three ice creams and any kind of well, Then we see a movie. Some. Some. Some one. Someone. Hand some. Handsome. Someone handsome. Oh, I bet you mean me. Ah, uh, what's he now? <clears throat> Dear Miss. No, no, no. Oh, why, hello there, Miss Jones. No, it's no use. I, I can't think of anything. What's wrong? Well, I, I want to call my teacher. It's her birthday. I want to tell her something nice. Well, how about... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. No, everybody sings that. I want to sing, ooh, something different. Well, how about roses are red, violets are blue. Oh, forget it. I'm just going to phone her. I'll think of something different to say. Hello. Happy birthday, Miss Jones. You sure got nice bones. Oh. 
Well, that sure was different. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Well, Millie, it's your first day as a policewoman. What do you suppose will be the first thing you'll have to learn? How to blow my whistle. No, Millie. That was wrong, right? But I would be willing to wager that later on I will get to learn how to blow my whistle. Yeah. That's correct. All okay. right. Now, first thing you're going to have to learn, Millie, uh, is, uh, well, <clears throat> what would you do if, what, what's the first thing you'd do if you saw two crooks running down the street? Um, I would call a cop. Oh, Millie, you are a cop. Yes, I am a cop. I would call me. No. No. No, no. No, you'd get the crooks to stop. Uh-huh. See? Uh-huh. I see. Well, um, how? Well, you'd blow your whistle. Uh -huh. See? Like that? Yes. And then you yell, stop! Oh! Like that. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> How silly of me. <laughs> Try it, Millie. Try it. Okay. Yeah. Just a second. What? I do not see one living crook on the street. I cannot do something no, without... No, 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 Millie, Millie. You just pretend that you see the crooks. It, it, it's, you know, it doesn't matter if there's no crooks. You just pretend you see them. And, and you blow your whistle and you get them to stop. All right, just... hold on. Okay. Watch this. Stop. Yeah, well, well not, not, not quite, Millie. Oh, uh, almost, though, no, huh? Almost, Getting but, there? Uh, okay. Uh, like this. Hmm? Stop! Aha! Uh -huh. See, a little masterfulness. Got it. Little pig iron. Yeah, okay, yeah. here we go. Uh, stop? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. You don't uh, look certain. Well, see, it, you're close, Millie, but not... Uh, look, look. Stop! Oh! See, you can, uh, now, look. And, uh, see. I am going to get it right this time. Right. Would you like to bet that I am going to do it so great this time you will faint? I believe in you. All right, here we go. Okay. You ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Stop! Ah, uh, great, Millie. You got the makings of a fine policewoman. I had that feeling. Yeah. You see, I have this... Millie, this... two crooks. Look, running down the street. No, Millie, get him. Blow your whistle. Get him to stop. Hey, you guys! The next word you see will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Can you read it before it does? musical mites, the short circus, singing their brand new hit, Stop! I'm giving you my notice, my crying days are through, I'm standing close to happiness, is what I'm gonna do. Hey, 
You guys? And now it's time for a very short book. Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel found a house. The house was made of cookies. Then a witch came and chased them away. Yeah! It was her house. Let them eat their own house! <laughs> the end. Look out. What you got new in my favorite junk store? Tell I me. got some good junk from my favorite reading from. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, that's reading freak, my man. From freak, whatever. I got some good stuff for you. Where did you say that? Show it to gotcha me. Gotcha a necktie with the label on the front. Will you get to that way, town? Tie town. Genuine silk. It's you. Don't you know it? It's you. <laughs> what else you got? I got your beautiful painting. Oh, come on, Al. You know ain't no worries on no painting. No, oh, and that this fella that painted this, his name was so long that he had to do the painting down here in the corner. Yeah. Then All he right. did his name up here. <laughs> Check this out, will you? John, George, Henry, Louis, Raphael the third. Woo! That's My man's now, got a name. Listen, suppose you're out in the rain or something someday and you don't got nothing to read. Yeah. Got you this umbrella with old weather reports pasted inside of it. Inside? Take a look. Ah. <laughs> Sunny and mild to deep. High near 70. Look. Al, would you look at that? Precipitation probability near zero. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Okay. Uh, no. Now look oh, here at my pride and joy. Yeah. This is the first graffiti ever back from the 13th century, right on this night. Fella fell asleep under a tree and somebody wrote it well, on him. Look at this, will you? King Arthur is a fake. They said that. Well, that's graffiti, yes. all right. Look at this. Sir Lancelot loved Lady Elaine, fair child. Right, it's the real oh, thing. Right. Now listen, let me wrap this stuff up for you and you can get on your way. Wait, Al, wait a minute now. Not so fast, man. You got a lot of stuff here. I got to think about this a couple of days, you know. Oh, you kidding? This stuff is going to go. Oh, Albert, who's going to want to buy all this junk, man? Hello. I'm looking for a tie with a label on the front and a painting with a picture in the corner and a suit of armor with graffiti on it. Right on. I groove on all the words around mm, mm, mm. Long as they are written down mm, mm, mm. Reading's heavy, reading's tough I just don't seem to get enough 
that's my name, I tell you. What a dragon. The spellbinder never rests. He comes upon a farmer riding in a wagon. Come on, get out there, now, eh? <laughs> Takes his magic but misguided wand and turns the W into a DR. Needless to say, the farmer is surprised to find himself riding a dragon. What's going on here? And especially a dragon of the farmer-eating variety. Oh, boy, a juicy farmer, my favorite. Wah, wah, wah. Will the farmer be eaten by the dragon? Oh, where, oh, where is Letterman? Help! 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 Suddenly, suddenly out of a tree he comes, faster than a rolling O, stronger than Silent E. Shh. Able to leap capital T in a single bound. It's a word. It's a plan. It's Letterman. Taking a W from his chest, he covers up the DR and turns the dragon back into a wagon. What's a big idea? <laughs> well, you can't win them all. Our villain's day is never done. You can be sure that he will strike again. Tune in next time when Pedro will take on Maurice with some... Electric Company gets its power from the Children's Television Workshop. That Midler sang backup vocals on the Electric Company song, Right On. Hi, I'm Jim Boyd. At the very beginning of the Electric Company, I worked off camera as the voice of J. Arthur Crank. Eventually, Crank became a visible character, and I joined the ensemble cast. Look for me as the customs inspector and the Blue Beetle in this episode. Today on The Electric Company, Sylvia will learn a lesson about... Oh, hi there! I am early. 
Charlie Gibbons. I'm sure you've seen me oh lots and lots of times talking about all the different kinds of things I eat. <laughs> well, for instance, I bet you didn't know that sometimes I snack on a tennis racket. <laughs> well, of course, you didn't know it. I just told you, didn't I? Well, I see this one isn't quite ripe, so I'll put it back. You know, I know these things might sound silly to some of you city folk, but then out here in the woods, you kind of do what comes naturally, you know? It gets lonely out here in the woods. Uh, I'm going to eat this later. Juicy, it's just about right. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about all the natural foods out here that have the st sound in them. Yeah, you heard right, that's st, S-T combination, says st. Oh, that's very good for you, very healthy. It's like a vitamin, makes you strong and natural and healthy, you know? For instance, whenever I'm expecting a lot of company, haven't had a lot of company in a long time, but if I were expecting some, I'd whip up a really uh, substantial meal. You see how strong I am <laughs> from eating all of this stuff? <clears throat> Uh, good healthy meal like this fillet of stump. You see that? The st right up there in the front of the word shows you how nutritious it is for you, as well as delicious. Now, you may say to me, but early, I don't have a stump. And if I could find one in my supermarket, they probably wouldn't let me take it out of the store. But there are things in your own home, certainly in your own neighborhood, that will do just as well and that are very, very good for you, such as this staircase, staircase, you see? The st, the st up there, the st, is right in there showing you how healthy this little beauty is. Now, I find that the tenderest, best part of a staircase is the first step. Now, this is doubly nutritious because it has two sets of the st in it, you see? First step. Now, this, this being on the bottom, the first step, is close to the earth, down in the soil. So it has all the sweet, natural juices of galoshes and the like. Now then, you may say to me, early, or Mr. Gibbons, if you're a humble type, I don't want that much to eat right at the moment. So sometimes I whip up a little snack, like this stone pudding, you see. You see the st up there? Shows you how good it is. And these little babies will stick to your ribs, believe you me. Well, you may say, I don't think I'd care for that, so I tripped a lot out here in the woods lately. Uh, you can also fix yourself a stick gumbo. You gotta watch your gums on this, but it, it's, it's, it's very good, it's very healthy. Now, sometimes I, I mix the two of these, and I come up with another dish that I think you'll find tempting. Uh, I get tired easily. This is a platter of sticks and stones. You see the st, st here? There's two of them in this one too, so it's especially good. This makes an, an exceptionally good late, late night snack and also a dandy fly swatter. Ah, my eyes are going, I can't hit it. Well, anyway, you may be saying about now, how in the world did that old fella eat all of that crazy stuff and not get sick to his stomach? <laughs> well, don't worry about that. You see, whenever I make a pig of myself on the fillet of stump or, or the stone pudding or something, I mix up some herbs and I come up with a dandy glass of this bicarbonate of fig leaf. That'll set me free, I'll tell you. Ah, uh, thank you. Well, I uh, think that about covers all of the natural foods out here that have the st sound in them. You notice every one of these things had the st sound, which proves that I may be crazy as a blue jay, but I'm consistent. Now then, I have to go, take my dessert here. I have to go because I'm conducting a cooking class today. Good health to you all. Uh, over this way, Miss Grown Up. Look out, you're stepping in the antipasto. Mist, mist, mist. Sticks and stones. 
Oh, sticks and stones. You know what they say about sticks and stones, don't you? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. That is, unless the words are sticks and stones. First. Last. Welcome. Welcome to Pantomime Theatre. Today, the Pickle Barrel Players will present another living limerick. The limerick tells the story of King Lester, Queen. Hester, there, Jester, and his vest. Here we go. King Lester's court jester had zest, but Queen Hester did not like his vest. Said Lester, to Hester, don't pester my jester. His vest is the best in the West. <laughs> You are a pest, you are a pest, you are a pest. Oh, there. I'm finally the first in line. Excuse me, darling. Oh. Yes, excuse her, darling. Oh. How do you like that? I get bumped off a line by a kid movie star. Is this all you got to declare? Money? Yes, isn't it beautiful, darling? Okay. Well, listen, at least that was fast. Uh, excuse me, shrimp. Yes, yeah, excuse him, shrimp. You want to move that? Oh, oh yeah. thank you. What am I gonna do? He's too strong to mess around with. Okay, Mr. Wonderful, you can pass on through. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh. oh I'm in the front of the line at last. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Buster, but uh, we're closed. Closed? You heard me closed. No, 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 you can't do that to me. I already did, closed. No, no, hey, buddy, don't make me do something I don't want to do. What could you do to me? Excuse me, shorty, I'm going home. Excuse me, shorty. May I walk you to your car? Keep the line moving. Let's, next, please. A. Those letters make the sound A. Uh-oh, someone's out to get that sound of A. They're not doing too well, though. <gasps> well, A, you don't have anything to worry about. Those people can't shoot straight. What did I tell you? Looks like you're going to be around for a while, A. 
That's good because there are a few words coming up that have your sound, the A sound in them. We'll watch out for you, A. Good day, sir. Hello. What can I do for you today? Well, believe it or not, I need some paint. Well, believe it or not, you've come to the right place. You mean? Yep. This is a paint store. Oh, for joy, for joy. Yes. Well, what kind of paint do you need? Well, first of all, I need some train paint. Train paint. Are you going to paint a train? Somebody has to. Well, I hadn't thought about that. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. There you are, sir. One gallon of train paint. Paint. Oh, wait a minute. I used this kind of train paint last year. And? Well, when it rained, the paint came right off my train. Just the thing. Did you coat it with this? I don't know. What is it? Well, this is rain stain. Uh -huh. Now, the way this works is that when you painted your train, you coat the train paint with rain stain after the train paint has dried. I didn't know that. Listen, I don't suppose you have any rail paint, perchance. Rail paint? Yeah. Just happen to have one gallon left. Oh, lucky me. Yes, you are. There you are, one gallon of rail paint. paint. Very good. I think that'll about do it. OK, listen, notice anything peculiar about these three labels? No, do you? Yes. They all have the same AI sound in both words on the label. Hmm? Look at this first one here. Look at this. Look at this. Train paint. Uh-huh. Did you notice? Uh -huh. A I A I. Yeah. Right, and now look at the second one. Uh-huh. Rain stain. Uh-huh. Here we have it again. A I A I. Mm -hmm. huh? Now, look at the third one. Rail paint. A I A I. My, See? my, my, my. How All very, very interesting. Yes. I'm so glad you pointed that out to me. Oh, it's just a little extra service we like to give to our customers. Okay, That's all. how much is the paint? Uh, $20. $20. Do yes. you take a check? Well, we don't like to, sir. It's bad business. Oh, well, then it's okay, then. <laughs> Why is that? It's a bad check. Okay. Train. Next stop, Baltimore. Woo! Boy. Sure is hot. Sure would be nice if we had some rain. Mm. Do you remember the last time we had some rain? Uh-huh. A couple of years ago, before I was born, give or take a year. Sure would cool things off if we had some now. Some what? Rain. Do you remember? No doubt about it. Sure could use some Rain. If it's rain you want, then it's rain you'll get. Have no fear, the blue beetle is here. Uh, have no fear, the blue beetle is here. You know, I think that critter's been in the sun too long. Yeah. Yeah, it does kind of look like he's been sucking on a loco weed. Said mm. something about getting us some rain. <laughs> That's just what I said, fat person. You people in this town need rain, and I'm the guy who can get it for you. Watch this. Rain, rain, go away. Go, uh, wait, 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 86 that, please. That, yes, sort of got it off. <clears throat> Rain, rain, come again, and... Oh, send me down the wet stuff, send me down the wet stuff. I'll be waiting here for the wet stuff today. If you send it down today, then we'll go away. So, so little dance I do, so the rain will know where I am. Know what I mean? Phil, send me... It's, it's like a signal. Ah, <clears throat> uh, hey, rain! 
Over here! Anybody feel any rain? Well, well, now, uh, uh, come on, fella, give me a chance here. I mean, I said I'd make it rain, and I will. Making rain isn't all that easy. When I finish this, you're all going to be soaking wet. So won't you. I send this down the wet stuff, send this down the wet stuff, send this down the wet stuff, lay it all up today. Oh, ready for the wet stuff, ready for the wet stuff. I could use a lot of that today. Oh, send me down the wet stuff. Here I'm waiting, send that wet stuff down to me. Oh. Well, looks to me like you're finished. Anybody here wet? I know about you, but I'm drenched. his fence. So he found a pail of paint. And a paint brush. And then he painted his fence. I'll call it fence. The end. The next word you see will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Can you read it before it does?
Yes, my sweet. Arnold, stop the boat. Yes, my sweet. Arnold, look at that flower. Yes, my sweet. Arnold, that flower is beautiful. Oh, yes, my sweet. Arnold, I want that flower. Yes, my sweet. Your flower, my sweet.
Tune in next time when we'll read this. The electric company gets its power from the children's television workshop. Luis Avalos has appeared on television and shows ranging from Kojak and Barney Miller to Soap and The Incredible Hulk. Hi, I'm Hattie Winston. I joined the electric company in its third season and I stayed there till the very end. In this next episode, I've got a grab bag, a garbage bag, and a wig bag. Gee, I wonder what letter that was all about. Also, the short circus does a vaudeville routine, and Letterman goes to the corniest concert. We're gonna turn it on. Today on The Electric Company, Rudolph tells us he's... Chicken speaking. And now, the news. Scoop. Gravity grips east. A spell of heavy gravity is plaguing much of New England. Though this may be nothing new, people are having trouble just getting up in the morning. Air traffic has been grounded, and thermometers have dipped to freezing. As these pictures show, Gravity up to three times normal has brought many citizens to a virtual crawl. It's a real downer for these earthbound New Englanders. Stuff, snail, moves, up. You'll never guess who lives in this high rise. That's right, 
a snail. Leaving their cramped and dirty shells, snails are starting to move into comfortable apartments like this one. Its spacious living room, sunken bath, and fully equipped kitchen are everything a snail could want and more. With lots of closet space, it's more than a house, it's a home. Flash, man wears three ties. Here's Alvin Pearlshoulder of Atlanta, Georgia, who wears three ties. Alvin's dad, a normal one-tied man, is mighty proud. Sports, incredible, toss. Basketball star Tilly Von Dribble is about to attempt the longest basket ever. Here's Tilly in a field two miles away from this gymnasium where a window has been left open and a hushed crowd waits. She shoots. It's looking good. Oh, she misses. Well, they're letting that bum know what they think of her. The end. G. G sounds like ga, as in the word guitar. Now, a guitar looks something like this. Good morning, easy. Ha <laughs> ha, everything's <laughs> everything, mama, you know that. What you got here? Grab bag. It's a grab bag. It's a grab bag. Wait. Oh, wait a minute, I know, I know. A grab bag is a bag full of prizes, and everybody reaches in and grabs one, right? Right. Yeah, let's see what you got in here. garbage because garbage is a word that has the two sounds of the letter G in it. It has the G sound and the J sound. Garbage! And I'm also very glad that you happen to have a garbage bag here because a garbage bag is a bag that you throw garbage into, right? Wrong. <laughs> Get, 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 it, 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 two, 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 together, 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 get it, together, get it, together, get it, together. Get it together. Get it together. Get it together. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Well, looky here. A wig bag. Well, I know what a wig bag is. It's a bag in which you keep wigs, right? Oh, I'd love to see if you have a blonde. Right. Oh, 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 oh. 
Hmm? Well, you read this message. Oh. Uh. Key. Oh, it's too far away. <clears throat> I'll get closer. Keep. Oh. Off. Off. The giraffes. Keep off the grass. Hmm? Oh. Whoa. Hey, my boy, keep off the grass. Oh, keep off the grass. Hmm. Keep off the grass. It isn't our old friend Rudolph the Red-Nosed Clown. How are you, Rudolph? <coughs> Not good. Aw, oh, what's the matter, Rudolph? <coughs> My dog is gone. Oh, Rudolph, I didn't even know you had a dog. Well, what's he look like? He's a big, gray dog. Well, that shouldn't be too hard to find. What's his name, Rudolph? <laughs> gray Guy. Well, Gray Guy certainly is a sensible name for a gray dog. <laughs> oh, Rudolph, here comes someone. Is, is this your dog? I found him down by the old mill stream. Oh. That wasn't your dog, eh, Rudolph? <laughs> that was a big green dog. I see. <laughs> I don't really see. <laughs> well, maybe he'll come along. Don't worry about it. Oh, well, look, here comes somebody else. Hey, mister, is this your dog? I found him down among the sheltering palms. Oh, it is? Well, don't mention it. Oh, say, do you know the way to San Jose? South, thanks a lot. Oh, so that's your dog, Rudolph. Isn't he great? Oh, yes, Rudolph. He is the prettiest dog I've ever not seen. And I'm very happy you got him back. Bye-bye, hmm. Rudolph. I think I could stand a new pair of glasses myself. Grasshopper. When you feel the world is caving in, Barbara? What? Honey, that's not sugar. That's salt. Must be the gremlins. Barbara, there's no such thing as gremlins. It's your imagination. What's that? That was the radio. The gremlins make it do that. Barbara, last week the toaster broke. You said it was the gremlins. What was it the week before that? The, uh, the washing machine? The gremlins. Now, I don't know what's going wrong around here, but it's not the gremlins. Peter, I've seen them. They're little and they're green. <laughs> oh. Honey, I gotta get ready for work, but before I go, do me one favor. Say this what? after me. There is no such thing. There is no such thing. As a green gremlin. As a green gremlin. Okay. But I know better. If your toaster goes berserk, it's probably the work of a green gremlin. If your sugar tastes like salt, it's probably the fault of a green gremlin. 
We're the little folks who know how to ruin a radio. We're the little ones who like to steal a wheel from off a bike. We're the green gremlins. If your television's wrecked, you can probably suspect a green gremlin. If your homework disappears, you can trust your foremost fears. It's a green gremlin. We are always very quick to play a dirty, rotten trick. It gives us great delight to watch you struggle in a plank. We're the green. Take it easy. No, they were right there. They were singing and dancing right on this table. Barbara, you're going to be all right. Oh, Peter. G G grow. Grow. Where are you going? I am taking my case to court. All right, back. Would you mind helping me out? Not at all. Would you watch my pie? Certainly. Keep a good eye on it. What are you doing? Taking my dog for a walk. Taking your dog for a walk? There is no dog on that leash. You're right. Help, police dog! Where are you going? I'm taking my case to a higher court. Hey, where have you been? I just sang a song in the school auditorium. You did? Really? Did the class give you a hand? No, but they gave me a foot. Nya, nya, nya. What are you doing? I'm looking for my watch. See, I lost it over there. If you lost it over there, why are you looking for it here? Because the light is better here. Good evening, friends. Take this A to be your lawful wedded wife. I do. A, do you take this O to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. I now pronounce you O, as in boat and float and coat. Yes, darling. Why am I pronounced with your sound and not mine? Well, it's a, a traditional. I mean, when an O and an A get together, why, it's always been pronounced O, as in um, road or boat. Load? Load. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter how we're pronounced. Of course it doesn't matter. What matters is that together we make the sound O. O. Watch your hat and coat. Watch your hat and coat. Okie dokie. Hmm. Waitress! Yes? How are you? What, what, what comes with a steak sandwich? I do. Somebody's got to carry it. <laughs> I'll take it. Yes, okay. indeed. All right, I'll, uh, I'll have the jello also. Uh, no, you won't. What? Some guy just ordered it. Oh, all right. Watch your hat and coat. Watch your hat and coat. Mm -hmm. There you are, sweetheart. Steak sandwich yeah. and the jello. Oh, jello. Good. I thought you said that some guy already ordered it. Yeah, he couldn't finish it. Favorite sizzle. Okay, Dokey, thank you very much. Listen, listen, listen. Let me ask you something. About this sign now, watch your hat and coat. Now, now, what does that mean? It just simply means to watch your hat and your coat so that nobody takes it away. Mmm, I see. Watch your hat and coat. Watch your hat and coat. A uh, waitress? 
Now, what do you want? You know that sign says, watch your hat and coat? Yeah. Well, I was watching my hat and coat, and somebody stole the table. <laughs> There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a boat in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a boat in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a goat on the boat in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a goat on the boat in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea. And there's some salt on the goat, on the boat, in the hole, in the bottom of the sea. And there's some salt on the goat, in the boat, in the hole, in the bottom of the sea. And there's a hole, there's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a roast on the soap. On the goat. On the boat. In the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a roast on the soap. On the goat. On the boat. In the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a toad on the roast, on the soap, on the goat, on the boat, in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a toad on the roast, on the soap, on the goat, on the boat, in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea. A banana? banana? Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, you ruined the whole thing. I got out of the office. You don't all have to go, you know. You could come. You, I. There's a hole. There's a hole. There's a hole in the bottom of the sea. I'm a goat. In a boat, afloat, I don't mind being a goat, afloat, in a boat. It's just this oat stuck in my throat. I think it was a big mistake getting this basement apartment. It's freezing down here. You know, this is the third week I'm wearing a coat. You know, you are not the only one who is tired of wearing a coat. Didn't you order a load of coal? Yes, I ordered a load of coal. Well, they certainly are taking their time about getting it. Where's the toast? There isn't any toast. I made biscuits this morning for a change. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, it's hard as a rock. Next words you see will self-destruct in five seconds. Can you read them before they do? Help! 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 
helping, helping. Oh, I say they're my good man. Well, I'm sorry about that. I'm not good. I'm just pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to fight. Might talk to you for a moment. Oh, well, I have is... here something I'd like to get you interested in. This is a product, Mister, that will change your whole way of life. What is it? This, my friend, is an ing. I beg your pardon. Ing, ing, ing. An ing. Well, what could I do with an ing? What could you do with an ing? Well, I'll tell you. You put this at the end of words. Yeah. Understand? Well, it sounds good. It sounds keen, but I'm kind of busy right now. I'm going to play golf. Excellent example. Oh. Excellent example. Tell me, when you play golf, what yeah. are you doing? Well, I put the ball down and I hit it into the weeds and then I go look for it. But you are golfing. Am golfing, I right? yes, I am. I'm golfing. golfing, yes. I golf thought you'd understand what I'm trying golfing, to tell you. Yes. Oh, okay, now here's mm -hmm. another example. When you get to the green, what do yeah. you do? Well, I, I uh, look heavenward and then I start to play. But you put the ball, do you not? I've been known to. You've been known yes. to. Okay, now you take this in. Yes. You add it to putt. Yes. And you then have putting. 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 Yeah. Right. Okay, then I'm sure that you will be interested in buying this ink. All right, well, let me try it. I'll give it a try. Just do it, do it, do it. Don't take my word for it. Take it out. Try it out on yourself. Don't take my word for anything. That product, I'm sure you will understand it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing? Wait, what are you doing? Come on. That's not what you're supposed to. Wait. Hello there. Whoa. What? Well, uh, you want to buy it? Uh, no, I don't want to buy this. Oh, oh, no, because you don't have a dot over the eye. Walk. Walking. Golf. Golfing. Search. Searching. 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 <laughs> She is going to scream. She is screaming. She is going to flee. She is fleeing. She is going to return. She is returning. You can't fool me. Who's fooling? Well, this is where I came in. The Adventures of Letterman. A corniest concert. The concert is about to begin with Colonel Cobb playing his solo for horn. lovers. Yes! Out of the pit he comes, faster than a rolling O, stronger than a silent E, able to leap capital T in a single bound. It's a word. It's a plan. It's Letterman. I think 
I'll just take this H. Taking the H from his varsity sweater, Letterman turns the corn back into a horn. My only escape. You have no ear for music. What new low notes will our villain hit in our next episode? Tune in and hear them for yourself. Tune in next time when Fargo will decode this label. The electric company gets its power from the children's television workshop. is the longest serving president of the New York branch of the Screen Actors Guild. Spider-Man was a favorite segment on The Electric Company. In this segment, Spidey meets the Yeti. And J. Arthur Crank is back and really wants some pie. And there's another edition of a very short book. This time it's Cinderella. I don't know why we decided to spend the winter at Valley Forge. I still think Miami Beach would have been a lot more festive. General Washington, sir, the new recruit from the Regimental Culinary Academy is here. What? The new guy that's gonna cook for the men. Oh, oh, send him in, send him in. But you're out, sir. Send him out, send him, right. Uh, what's your name, soldier? <clears throat> Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle, sir. Weird name. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, tell me, Yancey Dingle. Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle, sir. Right, right, right. So tell me, do you know how to cook? Do I know how to cook? Hey, is George the Third English? Is it? Mm. Aren't George? Yeah. Right, so I, uh, 
I take it you do know how to cook private uh, Yank My Needle. Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle, G sir. Whatever, whatever, right. We sure can use a good cook around here. We haven't been eating too great lately, you know what I mean? What was it we had for dinner last night, Orderly? Our shoes. Oh, right. We had to eat our shoes. Well. The uh, filet of sole wasn't bad, but, but the, the filet, filet of heel, heel was, was lousy. Ah. Great act. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a terrific cook. I'm ah, glad to hear it, Yucky Noodle. Yankee Doodle! Yankee Doodle! Whatever, sir. right. Now tell me, what is your uh, speciality? Well, my speciality is macaroni. Mac hey. I love macaroni. We sure could have used a side order of macaroni last night at dinner instead of them lousy shoelaces. Yeah, they were a little stringy. <laughs> You love macaroni. Do I love macaroni? Hey, is George the English third? That's the other way around. Whatever. Well, listen, I happen to have some with me. Well, fetch it, man. Get him. He's a real cupcake. It's a stiff. <laughs> there we go. What is this? The feathers? You call this macaroni? Yeah, I always call feathers macaroni. Haven't you guys heard the song? Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. You're fired, Kinky Noodle. Yankee Doodle! Whatever! Yield! Yield. Mark has five seconds to read the next word he sees. Can you read them before he does? Yankee Doodle. when a furry monster from the frozen north, an abominable snowman known to his friends as the Yeti, threatens a large metropolitan area. You're about to find out as Spidey meets the Yeti. It's a warm summer day, and a young woman is about to refresh herself with a double scoop fudge ripple ice cream cone. When suddenly, jogging to keep in shape, appears on the scene. Oh, Spider-Man, am I glad to see you. Some big furry monster just came in here and sat on my double scoop fudge ripple ice cream cone. <laughs> You're telling me. I mean, the parks just aren't safe anymore. Look, you better catch this furry monster or I'm going to stop reading your comic books. Spidey sets off to try and find this menace to double scoop fudge ripple ice cream cones. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, an off-duty policeman is about to enjoy a well-deserved snack. Ah, grape soda with plenty of ice. Just the way I like it. glad you're here. Listen, the big furry thing just came along here, sat right on my grape soda. If I hadn't been off duty, why, I'd have arrested him for unlawful sitting. It 
should sound like the Yeti. It is the Yeti. And what other mischief is he up to? Meanwhile, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Get you. Get on with it. Rocco, I hope you love it. And you got to make a wish. I'm Don't forget to make, make a wish. I'm I got one. <laughs> That's not what I wished for. That's not what I wished for either. What happened? Somebody furry came and sat on our cake and he wasn't even invited anyhow. Bosco! Who was that red and blue person? The web slinger tries to figure out why the Yeti would want to sit on an ice cream cone, a cold drink, and a cake. Suddenly, he has an idea. Spidey figures that the Yeti must have gotten lost because he couldn't read street signs. He misses his home in the frozen north. He likes to sit on cold things because they remind him of his icy home. So why did he sit on a cake which isn't cold at all? Because he's a very dumb Yeti, and he thought the icing on the cake was made out of real ice. This gives Spidey another idea. Ices, 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 get your frozen ices. You take ten? This must be my lucky day. What is our hero doing with ten frozen ices? If he eats them all, he won't be able to fit into his costume. Aha! Uh -huh. Can it be that the human spider is baiting a trap? duty anymore, and you're under arrest. No? What do you mean, no, webhead? Oh, he's only homesick. Well, in that case, uh, I'll just leave him in your care, Spider-Man. So, Spidey offers to take the Yeti back to his home in the frozen north, thus once again making the world safe for double scoop fudge ripple ice cream cones. Say, I haven't seen these pictures of you in years. <laughs> oh, it's a picture of you as a tiny baby. Oh, cute as can be. <laughs> You, at your fourth birthday party. <laughs> you, in your toy car. My birthday car. <laughs> remember when you dressed as a bunny for Halloween? <laughs> I don't remember that. Well, you should remember how fat you got from eating all that candy. <laughs> ah, look, there's you swimming up at Lake Fudwater. Oh, now, is that you doing a headstand in the garden? No, that's you in your flowered hat. I've done it! I've 
done it! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Master. You don't understand, Igor. He figures. I've created a monster. Oh, another monster, just what we needed. Ah, but you don't understand, Igor. I know, I know. This, this is my greatest monster. Oh, well, that's something else. Master, what is this monster's name? Ah, I'm glad you asked that, Igor, mm -hmm. because the most important thing, thing about, about a monster is its name. name. I mean, you couldn't have a, a really scary monster with a name like Skip mm. or Hattie. Mm. Or Casper. Or Casper. As a matter of fact, Casper never made it as a name even for a ghost. That's true, but yes. Master, what is this? Monstrous name. Uh, I'm glad you asked, Igor. <laughs> Come, my friend. I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> the name of yes. the name of this monster, Igor, is you. Oh, <laughs> master, the name of the monster is you. But but why? Because, Igor, I have created a monster that looks exactly like you. Master, that is impossible. Why is it impossible? I made you, didn't I? Yes, but you can't make the same mistake twice. Oh, mm. couldn't I? Cast your baby blues on this. <laughs> is that you? Or is that not you? Master, it's me. It's me! Yes. Hi. He's gorgeous. Down, down, Eagle. Now you see why I named the monster. You. Yes. But yes. you bet your sweet popsicle I can. Of course. Oh. What? Master, wait. What? I think he's about to talk. No. Oh. Oh. Yes. But. You blew it! This is the sort of thing that can make a mad scientist really mad. Taxi! Gordon. You drive me up the wall. What? I said you drive me up the wall. Oh, drive you up the wall? Yes. Gordon. Oh, okay, that's a minute. Gordon. Hop on. Gordon, what are you Hop on. Gordon, there we go. Buckle up. Gordon, stop uh, it. Gordon, leave me down. Here we go. Oh, Gordon. No, Gordon. Gordon, put me down. Gordon, what do you think? Quiet. Oh, Quiet and you sing it. Thank you. 
lock. Locked. Thank you. You may go now. Jump. Jump. Lifted. And now it's time for a very short book. Cinderella. Cinderella went to the ball. She danced and danced and danced. Cinderella danced until it was very late. Cinderella danced until it was too late. The end. How you doing? Hey, you see what I got up here? Yeah, I'm just writing this up here to help you with this part we're going to be have coming up next. Right. It says, piece of pie. That's what it says. Now, you know what's tricky about this part here? Right, look at this. See in the word piece, you got I-E. You also got an I-E here in pie. But the tricky part, in the word piece, the I-E makes the sound of E, but in a word pie, the I-E makes the sound of I. Right, so that's what we're going to be going to be seeing a lot of that, that stuff in this section right here, right? And uh, it's going to be a drag, troopers, except if you watch closely, you're going to see two guys get hit with pies in this part. All right, so remember, while we're studying about this, keep in mind that we're going to see two guys get... We're going to see three guys get hit with pies in this part. Yahoo! Now I would die for a 
piece of your pie And that's no lie Hey I would die For a piece of your pie That's no lie Hey Of your pie that's no doggone lie a cowboy hi there excuse me miss yes yes could i have a piece of pie oh did you say you wanted a piece of pie i certainly did a piece of pie oh. Any kind of pie, honey. Okay. Pie. You've just seen it. I've just seen it. This gentleman has just ordered a piece of pie. But will the waitress actually serve him his piece of pie? Or will she hit him in the face with it? Let's ask these people and find out what they think. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, I think the pastrami on I the toasted pardon, raisin sir. bread. Pardon? Do you think this waitress will serve this gentleman his piece of pie, or do you think she will hit him in the face with the pie? Well, hit him in the face with it? Well, uh, gee, I honestly don't know. No, wait, no, wait, I'll, I'll change my mind on that. I think, uh, yeah, looking at her, I would say she doesn't look like the kind of person that's just gonna hit another human being with a pie. So I would say she will definitely serve it to him. So you vote no. She will not hit him in the face with the piece of pie. Uh, yeah, that's right, I'll go with that. Thank you very much, sir. Excuse me, madam. Do you think the waitress here will serve this gentleman his piece of pie, or do you think she will hit him in the face with the piece of pie? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> you know, it always happens that way on TV. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, she'll do it. Sure, sure. So you vote yes. She will hit him in the face with the piece of pie. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, the votes are in. This gentleman votes no. She will not. Hit him in the face with a piece of pie. No, I don't think she will. This lady votes yes. She will hit him in the face with a piece of pie. <laughs> Let's find out for sure. I, I don't think she'll Come on, hit him. Go hit him, honey. No, I voted yes. Him him. Hit him. She's not going to hit Will the man get hit with a piece run. of pie? Not hit him. Stay tuned yeah, and find out. Pie. Yeah. Now let's see what actually happens. Those of you who voted that the man would not get hit in the face with a piece of pie were... Correct. What'd I tell you? Those of you who voted that the guy with the mic would get hit with a piece of pie were also correct. What? is blue and flies. What is blue and flies? Yes, what is blue and flies? Hmm. What is blue and flies? My tie! <laughs> You see what I mean? If you was watching carefully, you've seen three guys, four guys, get hit with pies. That your idea cute, Swifty? Tune in next time when the servants sing... Electric Company gets its power from the Children's Television Workshop.
Spider-Man was created in 1962 by comic book legends Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Coming up in this episode from 1975, there's a burglar with a clock on his head. Letterman finds himself in a pickle. The Short Circus sings the fabulous Knock Knock Rock. And there's a very cool animation called, Hey Baby, What's Happening? Company, the kids sing about I'm gonna rob this place blind. Yeah. You know why I got this mask on? Because I'm disguised as a clock. Yeah. <laughs> this way, if while I'm down here doing my thing, somebody comes in, I'll just put on my mask, stand in the corner, and make believe I'm a clock like this. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Nobody will notice me if they think I'm just a clock. Now, excuse me, because I got to rob this place blind. Hey. Henry? Uh, yes, dear? While you're up, will you put out the cat and wind the clock? Yes, dear. Now, remember, put out the cat and wind the clock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put out the cat and wind up the, the clock. I got it. Yeah. Tick, tock, tick, mm. tock, tick, tock. Now, where is that clock? Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Oh, yeah. There it is. Tick, tock, 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 Bang, bang, bang. Take the Henry? Yes, dear? Did you do what I told you? Well, sort of, honey. I, I put out the clock, but every time I try to wind up that cat, he scratches the heck out of me. The short circus kids have five seconds to read the next word they see. Can you read it before they do? Oh, oh no. I know that. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Uh, Tick-tock! Yeah. Yeah. The Adventures of Letterman. In a Pickle. Today, we find Mr. Dill, president of the pickle company, Dill and Sons, about to eat a pickle. I love 
pickles. He said to his son, Gherkin. Said Gherkin. I want a chocolate soda. Son, I'm going to show you how to enjoy a good pickle. Wait, who's that sticking his head in the window? Did I hear someone say a good pickle? Let's have a little laugh. Oh, my, it's the spellbinder. With his magic wand, he changes the P in pickle to a T, making tickle. Love and the world laughs with you. <laughs> Will Mr. Dill be tickled green? Will he laugh himself silly? Oh, stop! Will his son ever learn how to enjoy a good pickle? Could you, could you go? Oh, could you, could you go? Oh, where's Letterman? Wait a minute. From out of a pickle barrel he comes. Faster than a rolling O. Stronger than Silent E. Able to leap capital T in a single bound. It's a word. It's a plan. It's Letterman! Do you want to be tickled, sir? Oh, no! <laughs> I'll save you, then. Party pooper! Now the laugh's on you, Spellbinder. Kitchy kitchy coo. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, please don't. Well, villain, the tickle's on the other rib. How can I ever thank you, Letterman? By continuing to make good pickles, sir. I will, Letterman. I will. Let me make a pickle. Taking a P from his varsity sweater, Letterman covers the T in tickle, making the word. Pickle! Goodbye, Letterman. Goodbye, Letterman. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye, folks. So, Letterman has triumphed again, huh? But will our villain take it lying down? And will these pickles make me sick? <laughs> Tune in and see. Quick. Say hey there, Melody Mavens. This your old discotechnician, Mel Miles, with sounds that know no bounds. And guess who's back on the charts? None other than the all-new Short Circus. Bigger and better and shorter than ever. So if you want to know what's up, Doc, don't go into shock, because here they are to sock you with the knock, knock, Rock, are you ready? Then here we go, baby. What's up, Doc? Don't go into shock. We're about to sock you with the knock, knock, rock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wanda. Wanda who? Wanda, watch me put a lampshade on my head and do a dance. Fat chance. When you eat it, or it's sure to make you choke. No joke. What's up, Doc? Don't go into shock. We're about to sock you with the knock, knock, rock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ella. Ella who? Elevators that go sideways never get you anywhere. Don't care. and they might bite off your thumb. How dumb. What's up, Doc? Don't go into shock. We're about to sock you with the knock, knock, rock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Shirley. Shirley who? Shirley, there are better things to do than what we're doing now. And how? What's up, Doc? Don't go into shock. Angela.
talk to Angel a little bit. Hey, Facundo, you look terrific. Hey, Chuckles, hi, Frank. How are you, Wimpy? Oh, hey, oh, hey. Excuse me. <laughs> what, did you do something wrong? No, nothing. Oh, what, can I do something to help you? Well, I just want to know something. Um, who are you talking to? Oh, that's a very easy question. My plants. Your plants? Yeah, my plants. You see, my name is Pedro, and this is my place, mm -hmm. and these are my plants. Mm -hmm. You see? Pedro's plant place. Uh -huh. You see? Now, who else would be talking to plants in Pedro's plant place but me? Uh -huh. See? <laughs> but uh, why do you talk to plants? <laughs> oh, you see, it's very important to talk to them as human beings with a little bit of love and tenderness because that makes them grow. Growing is a plant's way of saying, thanks a lot, pal. Oh, do you uh, talk to all your plants? Oh, no. <laughs> Not the ones I'm mad at. I mean, I'm not crazy. I know my friends. <laughs> well, if you ask me, you're just wasting your breath. I mean, I don't know what good it does to talk to plants. I have never talked to plants. <laughs> but it does, believe me. Come over here. Let me show you my plum plant. Uh -huh. You see? Now, this is my plum plant. Mm -hmm. See? Now, say something to it. Oh, I will not. Oh, please. No, absolutely not. Ridiculous. Just, just a little something. Oh, say hello. I do not talk to dumb plants. <laughs> no. Hey, wait a minute. It's not a dumb plant. It's a plum plant. You see? Plum plant. Now say something nice to it. Well, I'm gonna feel awfully silly, but hello. <laughs> See, well, you didn't mean it. See, you gotta say it with a little bit of warmth and conviction and love, or it won't respond. All right, let me try. Okay. okay. Um, hi, plum plant. Uh, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's much better. Yeah. Now shake leaves with it. Oh dear. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> That's fantastic. It really works. I told you. Wait a minute. I gotta feed the plants now. You wanna watch? Oh, absolutely. Okay. My word. I'll just get the plant plate. The what? The, the, the plant plate? Yeah. Plant plate. Oh. See, they eat off a plate. They're not pigs, these little plants. Oh, well, I wouldn't think <laughs> of calling them pigs. <laughs> a little, yeah, no. little... Look, it's oh, looking forward to its meal. Oh, oh dear. Here comes your TV dinner, honey. Good, you're gonna go big and strong. What happened? It's taking a little nap. Oh, dear, that's fantastic. Look, I don't suppose you'll let me, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. Okay. Would you possibly let me feed some of your plants? Of course I would, little lady. That's terrific. I'd like to start with this one No, right here. no, no, any plant but this one. See, this one is ferocious. It's my guard plant. Oh. You see this sign? Beware of plant. You can't fool around with that one, por qué? Te así, ¿me te like? Te mete en la soja y te hace así, te echa para afuera como una carga de plátano. Oh, yeah? I better do this. Yeah, I think you better. Careful. Cuídate. Be careful, you crazy green thing. Oh, he's grabbing, he's pulling me. I can't let go. Oh, he must have been very hungry. Oh, you know, I've heard of licking the plate clean, but that is ridiculous. <laughs> Goodbye. It's nice to meet you. Oh, but please, you can't go. You haven't bought any of my little plants. I'm not going to buy any little plants. You have the weirdest plants in this place that I have ever seen in my life. They're almost like human beings, except that they can't talk. I am to conclusions, lady. <laughs> hey, baby. What's happening? Did you catch that show last night on TV? What's the name of that rock group? It's right on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, those cats were really smoking. They were cool, you dig? Man, what a heavy show. Wow, it really blew my mind. But I got my head together. Hey, man, for a baby, you got a good head on your shoulders. Well, got to split. Catch you later. Shh. Why? Shh. Shh. 
Look. You got shoddy, shabby shoes. Shucks, I need a shine. And now it's time for a very short book. The Old Woman Who Lived in a Shoe. 
There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. It had three bedrooms and two bathrooms. But then she lost the shoe. Now she lives in a one-room sandal. The end. Hello out there, literature lovers and fans of narration. Today's story, which I'm going to read to you in my own memorable and very annoying fashion, is the story of the old lady who lived in a pair of galoshes. Now, galoshes is one of them silly sounding words that has the shh sound in the middle of it, galoshes. Now, this old lady that lived in these galoshes was sitting there uh, one day uh, to- Frank, to, Frank, wait, wait a minute. Now, I've been listening to you tell this story, and you're telling it all wrong. What do you mean, all wrong? J. Arthur Crank doesn't make mistakes about stuff that's I, important. Crank, Crank, this time you are wrong. The old lady did not live in a pair of galoshes. She lived in a shoe. And I'm telling you, she lived in galoshes. She didn't. She did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Look, uh, I well, did. Uh, will you two just pipe down? Now, I am trying to get some sleep. All right? Uh, all right. Uh, oh, well, uh, maybe it was her sister. Shout. Shout! Shout. Shout. Hey, you guys! It says, don't. Don't what? Don't what? What do you want me not to don't? Come on, what's the matter with you anyway? What are you trying to do? Well, hey, listen, you nitwit. Are you trying to pull off something that I don't? Stupid. Listen, stupid. Do something. I'm, I'm standing here, I'm, and I feel stupid. Shout. Don't shout. Don't. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Don't shout. Of course, don't. <laughs> don't shout. Don't shout. You're absolutely right. It was a lesson on me. Wow. 
Wow! Wow! next time when the target shooter hits a Electric Company gets its power from the Children's Television Workshop. Moreno was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2004.